Hello and welcome to CB Online. These episodes are designed to help you love God and love others. So let's worship. worship Jesus through music. We're just going to spend a bit of our time now wrestling with the Bible and some of the big questions of the day. You are going to love this, so check this out. 
my name's Andy. I'm back with Tom this week. After a good break, we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we dive into the subject burnout and boundaries. Yeah, um, I don't know. Do you meet a lot of people who at the moment or in their life have said they've burnt out or they're feeling burnt out? Um, I, I definitely, I remember, um, I just, I think I've got this workaholic tendency that um, means that over and over again, I'll get to this stage where I suddenly look around and think, oh my goodness, I'm, I don't really want to see people. I kind of want to hide. Um, uh, eating too much sugary or fatty food. I uh, feel like my energy levels are, are gone. Uh, um, uh, if you, have you ever had an electric toothbrush? I have. Yeah, so you know you have an electric toothbrush and then as it's running down, the battery's low, rather than just, you know, you start to give it a bit of a helping mm -hmm. hand. And, and I think sometimes that's what burnout is like, isn't it? It's almost like it's not working like it should work. Yeah. So I have to give it a, a thing like that. And um, the amazing thing is that this is something the Bible talks about surprising amount. Okay. Surprising amount. And um, the, the key concept for us to think about is the concept of Sabbath, um, which is introduced in Genesis. Uh, so we get God, isn't it just amazing? I love it, like he creates the world, but it, w inherent within it is the idea that on the seventh day is the day of rest. Mm -hmm. I, I still find that staggering that God's personality has rest so um, present within it. Like it, it's inextricable, the idea of rest. Uh, and so that idea of rest and then, of course, Israel are commanded, like whatever you do, you must follow the, the Sabbath. That's the fourth commandment, top ten. Sabbath must be followed. And then, of course, they don't. And then actually um, it's in Ezekiel that God really says the reason why you're going into exile 70 times seven. Oh, it's Daniel, isn't it? Not Ezekiel. Daniel, 70 times seven. Uh, commentators in Christian you think that's God's re restoring Sabbath to the land okay. the idea that the rest that should have been in creation was stolen from it by Israel refusing to rest and so God says 70 times 7 I'm going to restore the rest to the earth that it should have had so this is pretty massive I, I mean just plotting a, a thing a big themes of the Old Testament I mean it'd be right to say that humans Adam and Eve's first day on the earth was the Sabbath day? Oh, that I mean, yeah, yeah. Yes. So the, uh, that's interesting, and then obviously it makes the the top ten commandments above: do not murder, above do not steal, above do not bear false witness, and then a big part of why the Israelite Israelites were sent into exile was for not honouring the Sabbath. Yeah, I think a lot of going into exile is linked to idolatry and the worship of other gods and and if the fourth commandment is you know love the lord your god like don't worship idols don't take graven images follow the sabbath like the sabbath rest is so linked to the worship of yahweh mm. that if you don't do it then if you don't do it then there's a sense of actually are you worshiping him and that was what it was for israel mm. now of course in the new testament we see particularly in the book of hebrews uh, looking at how Jesus reworks the, uh, this, this concept of rest and Sabbath. And uh, there's this passage in Hebrews chapter 4, which is just amazing. It says, um, you know, many, God set a certain day, calling it today. He did a long time later. He spoke through David in the passage. Says, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. And what he's doing is like, that there's a promise of rest and he, and he kind of does a strange thing, which they do quite a lot in the New Testament. So they kind of pull a bit of an Old Testament and they use it in a way you think, oh, I really? <laughs> is, that what, is that what that means? Um, and so what he does is idea of today, if you hear the word of God, don't harden your hearts. What he's actually doing is he's linking that into the idea of there's a moment now where you can either step into the rest that God has for you and make yourself ready for the what he called the eschatological rest, like the coming rest that Jesus makes possible, um, if as long as you don't harden your hearts. Mm. And so he says this, like, um, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their work, 
just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. And so what, what we see in Hebrews in the New Testament is this concept of rest, of being people who honour the Lord and step into the rest that he provides through not having hard hearts. Okay. And, uh, and so that brings the idea of like burnout, ultimately, we call it burnout, but uh, as burnt things like burnt toast often mm-hmm. gets hard, <laughs> yeah. there's a sense of, there's a hardening of yourself inside. Okay. Do you, do you relate to that? Yeah, totally. It's interesting. I was reading um, a couple of weeks ago a book called um, 4,000 Weeks by um, kind of contemporary philosopher Oliver Berkman. Uh, not a Christian, uh, but it's really interesting in looking at the philosophy of time, how he finds himself coming back to traditional Judeo-Christian view of time and the best way to use it. And he talks about the example, was it the Soviets who tried a 10 day week? Oh, wow. Um, and it went very, very badly. It's almost like this seven day pattern is is woven into the universe. Wow. Um, but he, he also just highlights, which we know, but the way in which we've, we've spoken about it before, like this neoliberal free market economy, the pursuit of capitalism just gives us this drivenness mm. of I must be working. I must be working all the hours and like le- like leisure's been taken like you, let's do a side hustle or. Yeah, I am guilty yeah. of this train for a long distance race yeah. or yeah. we can't do nothing. Uh, and I so much relate to that, Andy. I mean, <laughs> I'm like a joke to myself sometimes. I think I can do anything with my time apart from something that feels inefficient. Yeah. If I look at a moment, and I think, what have I done? And what have I achieved in this last hour? It was an inefficient use of time. I just get I wrap myself in knots about that. Yeah. And um, I could point fingers at all kind of things like our education system, yeah. you know, our culture, a free market economy, and the idea that everything's about productivity. Um, but ultimately, what it, that is, I see the Bible would prescribe it. Hebrews would say, look, what that is, is that's actually a hardening of your heart to say, God can define me. God gives yeah. me an identity. He ushers me into a rest. It's his fight and his battle that he ushers me into a rest. And I harden myself to that. And instead I say, no, I need to achieve this for myself. I need to grasp hold of this for myself. And that is why I think Sabbath rest is such a fundamental principle in the Bible because it it draws a line between how do you think you're going to get what you want? Yeah. Are you going to trust that there's a God who loves you who will bring it to you? Or are you going to say, no, it's really down to you? Yeah. And it's fascinating how Berkman finds himself coming back to that. He even quotes the, the theologian uh, Brueggemann, right. Sabbath as resistance yeah. Yeah. against all of this. And he says, I'm not, it's something along the lines of, I'm not a believer, uh, but I find myself drawn to the idea of Sabbath because at its essence, is, it's, a, it's like an acknowledgement, a recognition that at the, at the deepest level, life is a gift. Mm. Mm. Like it's been given to me. Mm. I can't work, I'm not working for it, I'm not producing, it's a, it's a given, it's yeah. a givenness. And I, I, that language of you using of drawing a line, it draws a line, it says, I cannot produce everything that I want to produce by myself. And I, I was never supposed to, yeah. in a way. Oh, I love that. I'm like, that's really profound. Yeah. <laughs> it's not mine. It's a good book. It's a good book. It's worth engaging with. But it's interesting, like, if you press hard enough on, on, like, what are we here for? What is time? Like, at some point, you have to recognize this was given to me. Mm. Mm. And for me, the scriptures open it up in an even more profound way because it's a gift from a good God. It's entering yeah. into his rest. Yeah. It's... It's trusting that he will provide for me today and tomorrow. Uh, that, I mean, that was some of the issue with the Israelites, wasn't it? Going out collecting manna on the on the Sabbath day. It's like, no, it's it's here. It's a given. It's it's yours. Yeah. But we sometimes str- we like we struggle to get into it, don't we? 
Well, I think um, I recognise I really struggle. And, you know, I would say I'm somebody age 23, I was burnt out. Right. Uh, um, working for a church, doing youth ministry, seeing lots of people come to faith. Um, but just so bad at, ho- at drawing boundaries. Mm-hmm. Say, saying ultimately, you know, my success, my reputation, my achievements, uh, uh, it's all just gifts from the Lord. It's not about mm. me. And, and the inability to say that meant that I just got to the stage, I just went for a walk one day, I remember, and I just, just felt numb, just sort of mm. like re- recognition, actually. What have I been doing? I've just, this has been so much my drivenness. And I, I hear, you know, I think God's desire for you watching, listening, is it, for many of us, we just need to be set free from those kind of white knuckle clink, you know, I must do this, that, just to free us. And, and, and the idea of rest and um, Sabbath and shalom, the opposite of burnout, is just the most wonderful thing. It's almost too good to believe mm. that God would give you for free all this stuff that you think you have to work so hard to get yeah. that inner peace. Um, so that's where boundaries come in. So we thought it's really interesting. Like what are the boundaries that help us? Now, in the Old Testament, the really clear boundary was there's a 24-hour period from twilight on the, you know, the Shabbat through to the end of the, the, that daylight the next day. And that was, that was what you did uh, as a boundary. And there's all kinds of things you couldn't do and shouldn't do on that day. Uh, but then with Jesus, it's reinterpreted, and there's no longer, I, I would say, no longer, certainly Hebrews 4 suggests, that requirement from the Lord to set a boundary on that 24-hour period. We might still want a 24-hour period. We can mm-hmm. ask you about that. But uh, but there's like a, by the Spirit, we're given wisdom and an understanding of how do we prevent our hearts getting hard? How do we keep ourselves soft to the Lord and trusting in His gift to us? Um, and we use boundaries for that. I think that's just um, Henry Cloud, great book called Boundaries. Um, tell us about some of the boundaries you use. Yeah, so I think about, at, you can think about at different time levels, can't you? Like daily, weekly, maybe monthly, uh, and annually. Um, daily, some, a couple of things I do try to do every day is, um, I don't have a time limit on it, but I try to not pick up my phone in the morning as soon as I wake up almost for as long as possible mm. unless it's to read the Bible or put on worship music I, if I can I use a paper copy that's most days um, but I just won't engage almost for as long as possible <laughs> at some point you have to see what's going on and so on but it's not the first thing I do when I wake up and that's a very very conscious decision even though there's something within me most morning that's like oh what's on my phone mm-hmm. Um, just the just the mental space. I wish I was better in the evening. Um, I hear so many wise people tell me, turn off screens, you know, an hour before. I'd be lying if I said that I did that, but I'd love to get there. But another practice that I do try to do daily, um, and it started in lockdown actually, um, I just, because we had a bit more space at home, but everything was kind of crowding in because home became workplace and everything else. Uh, I just said to myself, how long can I sit silently and in stillness before the Lord? And, you know, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, eyes shut, just put the timer on my phone, nothing. I've got no agenda. I don't try and pray. I don't try and empty my mind. It's just silence and stillness. Um, And... I've found a lot of replenishment in that wow. and sometimes like it's profound and I feel like the Lord is there and there's a thought that comes in other times it's just it's kind of psychologically recognizing there is too much for me to do today mm. I'll never be able to cram it in mm. but this day's been given to me by the Lord and mm. kind of here I am so that's that's a couple of daily things that I try and do. Is there anything that you would chuck in on, on a yeah, daily I level, Tom? I think that's so nice about that. Um, is that, you know, for some of us, we'll be watching this and we could never get 10 minutes of silence yeah. in our day. Um, you know, we're both dads and there's a, there's a reality, there's, a, there's times of life, uh, whether it's with kids or whether just 
whatever's going on, you could you just can't create yeah. ten minutes of silence. But you can every day say, I'm not going to pick up my phone for this moment. Mm -hmm. But you can do those things, and I think that's really empowering and helpful. And um, you know, if, I just try every day and open the Word. Yeah. Um, and um, I found Psalms to be mm. just so rich in this last few months. Um, and uh, you know, I, I love Augustine. I don't understand or know most of what he said, but just love some of what he said. And uh, one thing he spoke about was Psalms he saw as Jesus's own prayers. So he, he thinks, he says, I love this idea that every Psalm is a prayer that Jesus prayed. Mm. And they were written before Jesus lived, so I'm not quite sure how that works. But <laughs> anyway, so I've just found now that read a psalm and I think this is a prayer that Jesus prayed. And so if I pray this prayer, I'm praying the exact thing that yeah. Jesus himself prayed. And I love that. And I find actually a moment of rest almost being gifted to me by the Lord mm -hmm. in many of these psalms. You find a phrase that catches you. Yeah. So I try and do that each day. Um, and, you know, I think... I relate to the silence thing. I do think you know, Dallas Willard would have said solitude or silence was the foundational discipline for really moving yourself on somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, for, uh, and by moving yourself on, I guess, in the language you've used today, is to say like, that sort of calcifying, that hardening mm -hmm. of your heart is reduced, it's softened through silence and time alone. Yeah. So I've just spent um, a week, first time in my life, okay. uh, four days totally on my own in silent retreat and um, when, I was, <laughs> when I was on my way I was thinking so you you were silent for four days so okay so I was in I was up north yeah and I was walking some of the time yeah and if it was in this kind of, uh, south mm -hmm. you'd be fine but because we're up north <laughs> every Maybe person walks by says, I'll do <laughs> hello and you can't ignore them all yeah so I mean, silent retreat with like saying hello about a thousand times in four days. <laughs> but as much yeah. as I could, I was trying to still myself. And I found it so that excruciating day one. <laughs> really, I was thinking, why am I doing this? I hate this. I want to go yeah. back home and see the kids and all of that. And by two, day two, I started to get it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And by day three, it's like almost like this intoxicating feeling of like, the, the freedom of silence is mm. incredible because you realize that nothing is intruding, nothing's making a claim on you, nothing is, is diverting you. It's purely you yeah. before the Lord. And I, I just found that staggering. Like even now, I can't describe it. And on the fourth day, like I just. Paul talks a lot about inexplicable joy or something that's just beyond words. And I don't, I don't know, I, I don't want to overstate it, but it, there was something that I tasted in that which was staggering and mm -hmm. stunning. And I would love people to have a sense of that. And so that's the first time in my life ever, but I'm now thinking, how could I do something like that uh, in few, as an annual routine? Okay. Or every six months, just something, probably not that much time away. I'm not sure, Leslie, my wife would, <laughs> would allow that, but you know. Yeah, that. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because in that, and it, everybody's circumstance is different, and there may be people watching, and actually, yeah, you could get a two, three day thing. Most people will think, I could never do that. Uh, but it's a funny thing, isn't it, of almost fighting to get to a place of rest. And we look at things like how the Jews. Uh, made so many things around the Sabbath, you know, don't go up the elevator, don't press the elevator button and things like that. And we recoil from it or the Puritans, you know, you need a clean house, a full larder, uh, run bath, I think, before. But actually, you can see how they got there, can't yeah. you? Because we have to fight. We ha we, you don't just fall into significant rest, do you? Yeah. The pattern of of life where we are is... If you just go with the flow, if you just fall into it, then you are going to work yourself to the edge of burnout. That is what will happen mm -hmm. with all the responsibilities. And so it's, okay, this is really difficult for me as a dad of four, a husband, significant work responsibilities to take four days away. But I'm going to make it happen because the, the rewards are so big. Um, maybe on a, a smaller scale, you know, most of us to some degree have to fight 
to to get that 24 hour period where now I'm not going to work. I'm not going to check my work emails. I'm not. Go I'm going to try and come off my my WhatsApp messages or wherever your your work colleagues get you. Um, and because we're not going to just going to fall into it, are we? So I think that's so powerful. So. Listen, we, we, the last thing we want to do is heap burdens mm. on anybody, isn't it? But back into that verse in, in Hebrews 4, and this is what you're saying, Andy, like, you know, that to enter the rest, he says, like, make every effort. Make every effort to enter the rest. Love that. <laughs> and so we just want to pray for yeah. you now. That this, this yoke that Jesus offers you would really feel as light as, as it truly is. And that the efforts that the Lord would have you take would actually feel to you like um, like the unwrapping of a present, like the opening of an Amazon parcel. Like there's effort, but it's to get at something so good. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we pray mm -hmm. uh, for each and every person watching this, God, that you would give real sense of wisdom and understanding. What are the boundaries they can put in place? What are the deep wells that you're calling them to open up? And I pray, Lord, just would you bring rest upon us as your people? Just the profound and beautiful and stunning rest that I tasted, a ton of tiny, tiny, tiny flavour of. Would you, would you lead us into that? In Jesus' name. Amen. So there we go. If you've got any questions or comments or anything else at all, please just pop it on the comment section of whatever platform you are viewing this on or email us at hello at croinvineyard.org.uk. We would love to hear from you. So we hope to catch you next week for another CV Online. In the meantime, be blessed. Hey it now, we're only at the start of what he's doing here. Hey it now, you don't have to lose. Uh, okay, what, what's a good tea up for you? Um, today we're going to talk about burnout and boundaries. Hey <laughs> 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 now, now, we're only at the start of what he's doing here. Of every disappointment, let us cling to love, to the hope ahead of us, so we can hold on to every single Hope ahead of us.